So welcome to all of you and a special welcome to Marjolein van Eck, IBM Europe talent leader. More and more focus and attention is given inside and outside IBM on batches. For example, IBM just issued a million batches, definitely a great milestone. So Marjolein, we are interested in your story and would like to ask you a couple of questions around batches and IBM's uh, way of managing batches. So first of all, why are you involved in open batches? What makes uh, sense for you to use them? Well, you know, just a little bit about my background. And I, I started um, with the badges program in IBM, I think for already two and a half years ago, when we really were at the forefront of thinking through our strategy, our skill strategy. Um, and then at the same time, badges was a new thing that was happening in our wider ecosystem. So that's also when we said, we're really looking for something that can support the new way of driving career and skills experiences for our employees. And we really saw badges as, yeah, almost a golden ticket to help us do that. So it's really been a great vehicle for us to drive skills as a currency. It's, it's literally a digital skills currency. And um, the reason I was involved is that it was my job. So I was at the time part of the global team thinking through career and skills strategies. And this was definitely one of our more innovative uh, programs. So I helped to establish the IBM Open Badges program. And since then, we've been very successful. Like you said, we've issued a million badges to date. Um, but there's obviously a lot more than quantity. There's you know, an entire governance behind it and how we me measure and manage it. Um, so for me personally, I'm really passionate about career and skill development uh, of everybody, including our IBM employees. And I, I'm really passionate about badges as well because I see the potential. Um, and one interesting fact as an example is we've never done any active Cross business unit worldwide uh, campaigning around badges. We've never told people go and earn badges. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we've had our promos, but it's really been a self market uh, product. And that's the first time we've seen it, right? Norm normally, with HR processes, you kind of develop something, you cascade it, you have to have a lot of push and campaign behind it. With badges, none of that. It was literally people started earning badges, got really interested. They were posted on LinkedIn or internal, people saw that and they said, hey, that's cool, want to get one too. And that's really helped us to accelerate um, the whole badge program. And it's not an HR uh, owned initiative. It's actually a business led. HR drives the governance and establish the governance. Uh, but it's really the business driving it, which again is really, really unique. Super. <laughs> So what are the reasons that prompted IBM to get involved in open badges to recognize skills? Well, it was a little bit of what I just described. And then, um, you know, it's, it's not just a skill development play. I think it's also a, a recognition play. It's a retention play. It can be a compensation play because it's not really badges. It's really the fact that we're focused on skill development more than about the traditional way of developing your career. So for us, you know, when rethinking about no linear paths anymore and it's more experience based, the equation quickly goes into the whole skills dimension and that's where badges play a critical role. So for IBM, it was, you know, obviously we had to do some convincing and there was some politics and stakeholder management and you have to break through some of that, you know, this is how we've done things as well. But I think we found a way to blend the, you know, traditional way of career management with the future way of managing skills and careers and really brought those two worlds uh, more closely together. And that in the end is for IBM a great value proposition. And, you know, talking about value propositions, we have been able to see why as well on, uh, on digital badges. So it's a very clear business case. There's obviously still people uh, around that are not that big of a fan, but that's okay, right? It doesn't have to be a one size fits all. So. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. So what type of open batches do you provide? Can you give some examples? What are the batches that you give or that you allow people to claim? Right, yes. And this is, you know, one of the big design differences compared to a traditional, you would say, competency model or skill development model, where you have almost a matrix, a very linear, and these are the career paths and these are the different levels and then these are how the different competencies are defined. So when people talk about badges, sometimes they try to put that into that context and then they get really confused because that's not how, ba not how badges are being set up and designed. So for us, um, we said we do need to have some structure, but it sits more on the front end where we define what are the types of badges, how do we de define the criteria for each of those badges. 
and then at the back end, you know, measuring success of badges, doing you know, the back end governance. Um, and that sometimes also means that we need to end uh, certain badges. So we kept really simple. And um, some of you may have seen it uh, outside as well, but we have an integrated design, an integrated look and feel that everybody needs to, to adhere to. And then we have knowledge badges, uh, skills badges, we have proficiency badges, and then certification badges. So in a way, you could think of that as leveling, but that's not how we really want it to be. Uh, but a knowledge badge is about you have a certain level of you know, knowledge about a certain product, a certain service. Uh, you're able to apply that in practice, but you know, almost like a basic level. But that can really be very broad knowledge or it can be a very you know, small piece of knowledge. Um, skills is more about you know, demonstrated behavior, demonstrated experiences and skills. So that's you know, in a way a little bit more broadly. Uh, but that's a really big bucket. So there's no way that you're able to compare one skills badge with another skills badge because the topic can be very different, the criteria can be very different, um, and the assessment. There's always assessment at the end. We don't issue badges for you know taking 40 hours of learning. There always needs to be a test. Um, and the most rigorous badges uh, are the certification badges. So talking about blending old versus new career development, that's where we really brought the IBM professions or certification programs into the mix um, and offering, for example, the architects and the technical specialists a way to build a more flexible career roadmap and badges are a key part of that. So in the certification badges, you see more use of the little stars, so the leveling um, within that as well. And that's you know totally fine. That's exactly how we want it to, to be used and you can you know, develop your roadmap using the badges of, as the building blocks. Um, so that's in a nutshell our categories. You know, to answer your question, we have actually changed the categories at some point um, and we've also added categories. So uh, it could well be that we do that again in the future depending on user needs. But at the moment, these categories really um, meet our demands from the business. Thank you. I understood that you leverage badges as well in the context of, of uh, IBM's diversity and inclusion strategy. How do badges support this strategy? Well, it's not so much that we um, have badges that drive our strategy so much, but it helps them to enable their strategy. And the way we're doing that is we've got diversity ally badges. Um, we have, in IBM, we have an existing ally program. So with most of our programs is that usually an existing program or an existing certification program where badges are now added into the mix that allows them to build more structure and more flexibility and more rigor and then recognition at the end. And this is a really good example as to where recognition, but more so um, offering badges as a way to drive more change in the organization can really help. So the value proposition for using badges with the Allied program wasn't much about the program itself because that was in existence and it was great. Um, and, and just for the record, the Allied program means that we have allies in our company who are uh, spokespersons for the diversity and inclusion uh, strategy. So they are our ambassadors, so to speak. And it's not uh, you go off and you know say I'm an ally, but actually requires that you demonstrated it through external and internal speaking engagement that you are mentoring uh, people from the community to really active participation uh, and you can't really earn the badge. I mean, I looked at it the other day thinking, can I, can I get it? But you actually need to do quite a bit to demonstrate that you're an ally and continue to demonstrate that you are. And then with that badge, it's recognition of yourself. Uh, but it's also a way to demonstrate to the inside community and the outside world that this is what IBM stands for. And you know, this is a very valuable badge that contributes to our diversity and inclusion strategy. Well, super. Are there differences in the way women and men earn badges or use badges at IBM? Do you see any difference between the two? Um, well, we haven't done an analysis, to be honest. Uh, it would actually be interesting uh, to have a look at if there's more females earning badges. Obviously, IBM is a big uh, IT company. We have uh, a lot of analytics in place. So we do study badge trends. We look at participation rates and also how it correlates to other HR factors. We haven't looked at it from a diversity perspective. Um, but on the flip side, you can start using it to drive more diversity in your organization. And what I mean by that is not so much the badges, but the underlying challenges that any big company, an IT company more than, than anyone else, 
faces with regards to attracting female talent, you know, university hires or experienced hires, retaining them into your organization and then moving them into executive positions. I mean, there's a lot about that in the press at the moment. And badges can be a really key differentiator there because, you know, we talked about um, in the press, at least they talked about the wage gap, for example. And, and there's also, I read the other day, there's a vacation gap. There's all sorts of gaps between males and females. And I think some of the underlying issues with females is also being visible and being known, um, being visible and being selected for certain job opportunities or executive positions. And badges can help us do that. They can help make females more visible. Um, and that's exactly what we're trying to drive. So again, it's not so much about badges as a key play for diversity or female diversity. It's more we look at the underlying challenges or solutions that we can put in place. And then badges can help us achieve that in a more accelerated way. So they can really help us drive some of these strategies, some of these programs. Um, I don't think we actually want to make a difference between male and female because that's the whole purpose of having an inclusive strategy. Um, but definitely uh, something you can use for succession planning, something you can use for females to see their progression path because it's not something that helps at the end to be recognized, but it also helps us to depict paths for people, opportunities they may not have seen before, and also a way to see what building blocks do I need, what skills do I need to develop to move into that role, and that's what badges can do too. So multiple angles, uh, not a direct one-on-one, -on -one, but definitely it helps us to drive the strategy overall. Super. Thank you for clarifying this, Marguerite, because I was wondering about that. Thank you so much for this explanation around IBM and badges. Hopefully a lot of inspiration for all of you. And thanks again for your time, Marguerite. Have a nice day. You're welcome. Thank you. Bye.